The kiln shell laser is a measurement tool which measures the deformation in rotary kilns, dryers or other slow rotating cylinders during operation. This movie shows how to take measurements and how to display the whole kiln as a three-dimensional model. Strictly follow the local safety rules given by the respective plant and local authorities. The kiln shell laser comes as a toolkit in a strong and tight transport case, which mainly includes the following items. The laser itself, the magnetic heat shield, a clamp pod, a high range Bluetooth adapter for USB, a battery charger with different country adapters, and a USB memory stick with the software for Windows, the TomTom Tools Measurement Studio. Optionally available, there is a rotation trigger which automatically synchronizes the measurement with the rotation of the kiln. The laser is typically mounted to the tripod, which comes with the toolkit. It can also be fixed with the clamp or on any other photo stand. The heat shield protects the laser from the heat radiation of the kiln. To connect the laser with the computer, the Bluetooth adapter has to be plugged into the laptop. Then start the software. When the tool is switched on, the green light appears. The measurement studio displays known devices in the device window, where they can be connected by clicking the connect button. Activate the laser pointer and open a new measurement. Click on Measurement New Laser Shell Run Out. The window for the graph and the measurement position opens. The tool has to be aligned towards the center and perpendicular to the kiln. Select the location of the starting point or the zero point of the kiln length. Here, on this kiln, the meter counting starts at the outlet. To start the measurement, click on the start button or press F5. For the first time, it is necessary to specify the sense of rotation of the kiln. The distance readings appear in the graph. To calculate the profile of the kiln cross-section, the software needs a rotation reference, typically the manhole. Each time the reference point is passing by, click on the marker button or push F9 to indicate the kiln rotation. A yellow line in the graph will show the position of the reference point. Ensure to push F9 when the manhole is in line with the laser point. As an alternative to manually indicating the kiln rotation by pushing F9, the rotation trigger or a rotary inclinometer can be used. Already after one or two kiln revolutions, sufficient readings have been taken and the measurement can be stopped by pushing F6 or the stop button. The values can also be displayed in a radar chart, which exactly reflects the measured cross section. The table below shows the meter position and the calculated results. These are the eccentricity, the angle position of the peak, the total runout, and the roundness deviation. Add the next position by clicking the Add button. Adjust the position value to the next location of the laser. Relocate the laser to the next position and adjust it as before to the kiln center. Click the Start button or push F5 to start the next measurement. Again, to synchronize the readings to the kiln rotation, click the marker or push F9 when the kiln reference is in line with the laser point. The rotation trigger would be able to do this automatically. F9 would only need to be pushed once on the first measurement and in case the direction of the laser is changed. Do not forget to save the file from time to time. To avoid confusions and to work efficiently, it is recommended to have a permanent meter marking either directly on the kiln shell or next to the kiln. The distances between the different readings can be adjusted independently to the access and to the requirements. A typical pattern would be every one or two meters, in areas of strong deformation every half meter. The order and the window size can be adjusted to keep an easy overview of the collected data. 
If there is no walkway along the kiln or the measurement is disturbed by excessive heat or sunlight, the laser can be placed below the kiln as well. To analyze the collected data, open the file and display it in the linear graph. Here it is easy to see if there are any outliers. Outliers normally come from pieces welded to the kiln and can be easily removed here in the linear graph. Click on the select button. Select the points to delete and remove them by right clicking the mouse. Browse through all the readings and check if they were taken correctly and free from errors. A first overview of the whole kiln is given when it is displayed in the topography view. It can be rotated, zoomed and even combined with the radar chart to see all the details. For the full picture, a dynamic 3D model can be generated. Just drag and drop the measurement file into the 3D viewer. The kiln appears. To distinguish the deformations, they are shown with exaggerated amplitudes and can be colored. The colors can have different meanings depending on the display mode. The amplitude mode shows just the height of the deformations. The curvature, which is the most relevant value for the refractory, shows the sharpness or smoothness of the deformations. And the grid opens the view to the center line, which helps to find the proper location for the correction cuts or sections to be replaced. Another great strength of this software is the possibility to combine the kiln shell with other measurements and see how the effects are linked to each other. For example, the wobble of the tires is mostly caused by the deformations in the kiln shell. The tires were measured with the IDM toolkit, but can be displayed here as well. Just add the tires and drag and drop their IDM readings into the 3D view. Looking closer at the tires, the wobble becomes visible. By changing to the grid view, the relation to the straightness of the kiln can be seen. The girth gear is added the same way. Open the measurement file, drag and drop it into the 3D view, and place the gear to the right location. More information can be found in the manual or on the website of tomtomtools.com.